Okay, so we have a great speaker up next. This is his first time visiting Northern Ireland, and we are so thankful that you've taken time out of your busy schedule to be here with us today. Finn Thormeyer, hopefully I said that right. Yes. You can, you can correct me, uh, is from Germany. However, he lives in New York, the lucky duck. He is working as a digital wizard. Finn is the best person to talk to if you want to build a personal brand through the power of social media. So let's hear it from the man himself. Finn, everybody. Hello. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, first time in Northern Ireland, first time in the UK, actually. So, um, really excited to speak here, and, and this is my first bigger speaking engagement, and I think this is, do we have the slides up already? Can we put the first slide up? Just so it makes sense, what I'm gonna say next. Cool, so that's gonna be the topic of, of what I'm gonna talk about in general, but just as an intro, I think, how I got here is kind of interesting. I met Lucy, where's Lucy right now? There, I love you Lucy. Um, she found me on Instagram and she thought my stuff is interesting enough to have me come to Northern Ireland and speak at her event. We met briefly in New York, um, but that's all the history we have through Instagram DM. I think that topic came up already today. Um, but just a very short background on why I am gonna talk about personal branding. I, my, my background, I dropped out of college in April last year, so just over a year ago, because I realized that's not what I wanna do, and I didn't have a clue what I'm gonna do, so I decided, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but let's just share me not knowing what I'm gonna do, and me figuring out what I wanna do. So, I didn't have a background in social media. Um, I started a blog, I started Instagram, started Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, YouTube, Anchor, all the platforms. I just tried to do anything and everything, and figured myself out, and somehow, I don't know why, people got interested in that, and I grew following, mostly on Instagram, that's kind of where I stuck. I think, if you look right now, I'm like 32K. Um, but why I feel very, I feel like I can relate to this audience is because I'm from a small suburban town in Germany, that's where I'm from, and so, there's nothing going on, it's called Bremen North. Don't ever go there, I, don't, I can't recommend it. Um, and so I, I was in this situation too, and I feel like a lot of, by the way, I, I, first before I keep on rambling, who here knows what a personal brand is? Who has heard the word personal brand? Please raise your hand. Raise it high, cool. So the majority, who here is building a personal brand or wants to build a personal brand or wants to grow a personal brand? Awesome. So majority. Um, how do we switch slides, by the way? Cool. Personal branding is basically you marketing yourself, right? You selling yourself. Anyone who wants to become an influencer, you're marketing yourself, you're trying to grow, you're trying to attract people to whatever you want to attract, whether it's makeup, whether it's a service you provide, but you're marketing yourself. And I, when, when I started my social media, I did not know what that word meant, and I kind of stumbled into that. I was just talking about whatever I was doing and whatever I was passionate about. People liked that, um, and then, I traveled to New York six months ago because I realized I want to get out of this place called Bremen North because there's nothing going on. And that's when people started telling me, you've built an amazing personal brand. And I'm like, uh, what? I didn't know what the word meant. And that's how I stumbled into that. And, and I'm helping other people grow on social media right now. Um, and everyone who wants to build a personal brand, and I realized that Half of these people of you guys are bloggers and vloggers, so you guys should know and are probably trying to build a personal brand because that is exactly what blogging, vlogging is. If you're trying to become an influencer, you're building a personal brand. Um, but there are also a lot of um, brands here. And if you understand that personal branding is just one type of marketing, and as a brand, you obviously are trying to market yourself too, because you either have a product or a service you want to sell, and you need to market that so you find customers. And these are the two things that help me grow, and that I use to establish a personal brand in such a short period of time without knowing anything. And these two are just two, basically they're underpriced marketplaces where you can either promote yourself 
as a personal brand, your blog, your vlog, your photos, your videos, your services, whatever it is you want to do. Or if your brand, that's where you can sell, that's where can, you can talk to customers, that's where you can build an audience for your community service, whatever it is. And these two things specific, specifically, Instagram story ads and LinkedIn video are, in my opinion, the biggest opportunity right now. And I'm kind of going over, that's what this talk is going to be about, why I think that is, and why I really, really recommend any single one of you to look at these two places very, very, put a lot of attention there because if you're not going there right now, you will miss out on a lot of opportunity and I'm gonna go over why that is. Um, who here uses Instagram? Cool, most. Who here uses LinkedIn um, on a regular, who has a LinkedIn account? Well, okay, who uses LinkedIn on a weekly basis? On a daily basis? Yeah, not a lot. So, um, I think, next slide. So, this is the, the basic theme of when you're trying to build a personal brand, or basically if you're trying to market anything, and it's the supply and demand thing. If you have a product and you want to sell it, you need to find this, the, the places in the market where you can reach people better than all the other people who have a similar product, who have a similar service, who are also a makeup um, blogger, vlogger, whatever it is. You wanna get the audience um, and, and reach those people so you know, you have to find places where um, that balance between supply and demand is in your favor. And right now, Instagram, and I think we, we all kind of um, whoever uses Instagram, it's very hard to grow on Instagram. Who feels it's hard to grow on Instagram? Who is struggling with that, who has followers there and is trying really hard to grow on there, but it's somehow not working out, even though you're doing all the things right. You found a niche, you, you provide value, you use hashtags, you DM people, that's all the things you learn everywhere, right? Like how to grow on Instagram, you use hashtags, cool. It doesn't work anymore. No one's really using searching through hashtags anymore and all the things that people actually look for in hashtags, they're so oversaturated that you don't show up. Like if you do your makeup and, and you use hashtag makeup, there are a million posts on there that no one ever will stumble upon your post. So that's the main theme that I'm gonna help you f overcome with those two things that I just said, LinkedIn video and Instagram story ads. So Instagram story ads, that's me on there. Um, have any one of you seen Instagram story ads? Who knows what I'm talking about when I'm saying Instagram story ads? Okay, so there's a big difference between people who use Instagram and who know what this is. Who knows what Instagram stories are? Right, so if you scroll through your stories, at some point you might find a video where there's this small word saying sponsored. And that means it's an ad. That means someone went to the ad platform of Instagram and Facebook, paid money to Instagram or Facebook, Facebook, uh, Facebook, and they paid Facebook to show that video to people as an ad. And this place, next slide, the reason why I'm so excited about Instagram story ads specifically is because it is the least crowded marketplace you can find right now. Um, there are five, 400 million daily Instagram story users. So 400 million people use Instagram stories on a daily basis. That is an incredible number. On a daily basis and Instagram stories, there are, there's no real number, but there are less than 500,000 advertisers on there. And I would say at least half of those are based in the US. So if we're talking Northern Ireland, it's, it's not a lot of people who are actually using this platform to run ads towards. And next slide. Here's just a number of give, to give you a perspective of what the power of this tool is. I can spend a dollar on ads and have 20,000 people watch that ad. If anyone has, has ever done any ads, that's a CPM of five cents. That is nothing you can ever get anywhere else. I'm paying one dollar, or one euro, it's almost the same, or pound, I think it's pound here, is it pound here? <laughs> um, and I get 20,000 views on that video. And 
Then you have that swipe up. That's a link click. And that's the reason why I'm telling this to anyone, because this is a tool to reach people and drive traffic to anything. That can be your product if you're selling a product. That can be your service if you have a service. That can be your blog site if you have a blog. That can be your Instagram page if you have an Instagram. That's how I used it. That video you're seeing right there of me being in there, that's the video of me in New York saying, hi, my name is Finn. I'm a random kid in New York. I'm not trying to sell you anything. All I want you to do is check out my content. And if you like it, give it a follow. And so the swipe up goes to Instagram.com slash Finnthormeyer. That's, by the way, my tag. Down, oh, it's cut off, um, down in the corner. And you can use this tool however you want. It's attention. It's a lot of attention. It's a lot of cheap attention, 20,000 or 40,000 eyeballs per dollar. You can use those eyeballs however you want. Um, I use it to grow accounts. I use that to grow my account. You can use that to grow your video channel, your YouTube channel, your blog. You can use it to drive to your website, sell your product, whatever it is. I don't care. Um, next slide. One trick, if you use it, and that's what I built this kind of presentation towards, if you use it the way I did it, to grow your Instagram, the trick is to target very broadly and to say, okay, I want to I wanna have people ca who, who care about my content, and so target, let's say, the whole of Ireland, or Northern Ireland, or the whole Europe, or, or even Asia right now. It's pretty cheap, because not a lot of people are advertising on there. But go very broadly. But this is an incredible tool that you can use however you want, but it's underpriced. And if we go to the next slide, this is an actual screenshot of a campaign I ran. And if we go to the next slide, spend $761 on it. Not a lot of marketing budget. That's not a lot of money. Next slide. That video, that ad got 16 million impressions. So not even a thousand dollars, and I got over 16 million impressions on there. More than 32 million eyeballs on one ad. Try to do that anywhere else. Newspaper, radio, TV ads, and clicks, almost 300,000. Those are the numbers of people who swiped up. So these 300,000 is the traffic you can get to whatever it is that you have people swipe up. 300 people landing on your blog. 300,000 people landing on your Instagram page. 300 people landing on your product page where you can sell people. Whatever it is, these are very good numbers and if you target more narrow, you won't probably get those numbers in, in that, in, in, in that uh, amount. But it's just an underpriced marketplace right now. And so whatever you want to do, personal branding, sell a product, use this. Um, next slide. LinkedIn video, that's the second thing. So that was Instagram story ads. Everyone should look at that. The other second thing that I think everyone should look at is LinkedIn video. And um, it's, it's a brand new feature right now. LinkedIn is an old platform. LinkedIn was founded 2004, I think. Um, 500 million users out there. Most people think, who thinks um, LinkedIn is an online CV? Who thinks that, yeah, that's how it used to be used. That's what it was, that's what it always has been, an online CV. You put your, your work experience there, your last job, you have maybe recommendations of your employer. That's how it's traditionally used. It got acquired by um, Microsoft last year. In September last year, they introduced native video. So only since September last year, you can post native videos on LinkedIn. Before that, you could only post links to your, to your YouTube. And so that means it's undercrowded right now. That's again what I meant with marketplaces that are uncrowded right now. There are 500 million users on LinkedIn. It's a massive old platform, but I would say there are only 5,000 people who consistently create content on LinkedIn, more specifically video content. That just means that that balance, 500 million people who are there to, who are ready to consume whatever you want to post, and only 5,000 people who are competing for that attention right now, just means there's a lot of, there's a massive land grab right now on LinkedIn video. And for example, if you see that video right there, 
That is a video I posted, I think, a month ago. That video got 23,000 views. I'm actually at LinkedIn in the Empire State Building because the VP of LinkedIn Video invited me because he saw me on LinkedIn and wanted to have lunch with me. But that's the opportunity right now. And that's this, again, like if you want to build a personal brand, make videos on LinkedIn and talk about whatever it is that you want to talk about. If you have a product or you have services, go on there as a, as, a, as a business owner and talk about your experiences. Like, it's just a tool. You can do whatever you want with it, but it's so uncrowded right now that the cost of entry is much lower than if you try to do YouTube right now. Because YouTube, everyone's doing YouTube right now. Like, if anyone has a video, you go to YouTube to post it. If you have a video, usually the first thing you think about, where do I post it? Cool, YouTube. That means that you're competing against millions of other people posting content. Here you're not competing with many. Also, one thing about the algorithm, and I think Calvin mentioned that briefly, right now LinkedIn wants you to post videos. So what they do is, whenever anyone li link likes or comments on your video, it works as a share because that gets served to all of their connections. And if anyone ever posted anything, you know you want a share. If you can choose between people liking your stuff, commenting on your stuff, or sharing it with their friends, you want them to share it because that gets reach. Right now, anyone who likes or comments on your stuff, it basically works as if they share it. That just tells you how big the opportunity in terms of organic reach is. Um, I tell anyone I meet, if you have anything to talk about, anything to share, anything you want people to hear, go on LinkedIn right now. That's the biggest opportunity. And obviously, it's a different audience, right? Like, if you go on Instagram and then go to LinkedIn, it's a different age, age range, but that also means that you can use LinkedIn as an additional platform to reach a completely different audience. I have audiences on Instagram and LinkedIn, and they don't cross-pollinate. Like, it's, it's a completely different thing. And that just means on LinkedIn, you have a lot of people who can actually buy stuff because they're in the 30s, 40s, 50s. They can actually afford your services, right? So that is a massive opportunity too. And then just one thing that I'm very passionate about. Um, as a personal brand, there are a lot of personal brands right now out there. Um, I don't know exactly how the situation is in Northern Ireland, but in New York, I can tell you everyone and their cousin and their mom is trying to build a personal brand right now. And a personal brand is a tool, right? You can use that however you want. Once you got eyeballs and once you got people to care about you as a person, you can do with that attention whatever you want. And so how to stand out as a personal brand? It's not very hard. It's to care and be honest. That's my opinion. There are a lot of personal brands out there who only want to build a personal brand so that they get free shit, who only want to build a personal brand so they can boast with their followers account, who don't care about their community, who don't care about the people who, they actually, who follow them, and who only want to sell stuff and push courses and, and promote stuff that they don't care about because it brings money. And it's also, the power of social media means that you can show whatever you want and you can also hide whatever you want. So you can only show the good stuff. You can only show when you're at awesome events, when you're meeting the big people, when you're doing fun stuff. But you can decide to not show the real stuff when, when, you know, when you're feeling down or when boring stuff happens or provide context that, yeah, you met a cool person or a big person who is important, but you're not actually buddies, but you only randomly met because they were at an event or whatever. So please, when you're building a personal brand, care and be honest. That's really how you stand out right now because most people are not doing that when they're building a personal brand. Um, and next slide. Right, questions. You can always DM me on Instagram. Um, I will try to answer. I will answer all of them. If, if you DM me on Instagram, I don't think it's showing. Yeah, it's Finthormeyer, E R F I N N T H O R M E I. And then the, after that is E R. That's what's not showing. That's my, that's my Instagram. How are we with time? Can we do like a couple of questions? One or two questions? Cool. Then we're doing a couple of questions. But that was what I wanted to talk about, personal branding. Use these two platforms, really. I hope I provided enough data. I didn't explain you 
how you win on these platforms. I didn't explain you how to make an awesome campaign on Instagram stories. I just wanted to show you why you should really, really, really consider going to these places right now and use them because that's going to change. More people are going to advertise on Instagram story, so the prices are higher. More people are going to create content on LinkedIn, so the land grab is going to be over if you're going to start doing it in a year when everyone is talking about it. So that's what this talk is hopefully conveying. Use these two opportunities right now. Thank you. Can we get a mic? Right here? Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really thoroughly enjoyed that one, I think, in the sense for everyone, it's a quick uh, tool to implement. Yes. So it's a quick message. It was really good. Thank you. Um, my question is, in terms of LinkedIn, I know it's been said a few times, and probably everyone else will agree with this, is that it's seen as more of like a corporate or like an academic or an online CV platform. How do you think it will look if I now project? So I'm in academia. So. I'm now thinking maybe too much about what my colleagues might think, but if I start to put my personality on LinkedIn and my, like, whatever, the head of my department sees that, I, I don't know how that will be seen. You know, I'm, I'm thinking there's an older age on LinkedIn as well, and will they begin to fade away and it will now become the new... Do you understand my question? So your question is that you're not sure how your employer's going to react? Well, not really. I think my concern is how how well do you think LinkedIn will take all this new material, like from makeup artists and bloggers and vloggers? And Because I have been on it, I'm on it quite a lot, and when I see videos like that on it, I skip past them because I'm like, no, I'm not on it for that. I think people are on it for a different reason. Um, I mean, that's, that's kind of what's being explored right now because it's so new. So it's kind of in the face of people figuring out what actually works on LinkedIn. And that's why I think now is the right place to do it because you can experiment and that's what you should be doing. I definitely think because LinkedIn is a professional platform, the kind of context in which you promote yourself is different. So I would approach it, for example, if you, what's, what, what do you blog, vlog about? Uh, I'll say fitness or nutrition. Cool. Yeah. So, I would, I actually just talk with someone who has a fitness business and there are some people right now who really give fitness advice, understanding what the audience is and saying, okay, it's probably my 40 year old, 50 year old um, who is not very active and so let me give fitness advice based on them and not to the 22 year old what's the best protein bar because the 50 year old doesn't even know what a protein bar is. Um, but definitely like, talking about it in the context of building a business. So anyone who talks about fitness also does the business side of things. You're not only training, but you're also acquiring clients, you're marketing yourself, you're, you're so talking more about that side of how did I find my first customer? How do I go about marketing myself as a fitness? So you reach a bigger audience, so you not only reach those people who want fitness advice, but you also reach all those people who think, how can I get my first customer? How do I go about finding clients? Maybe I'm not a fitness business, but that's, that's a problem that most businesses have. And that's how I think um, you should approach LinkedIn content right now. Yes. Thank you very much. I think, was that a bounty bar you were talking about? Say again? Was that a bounty bar? Bounty bar? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? That's a chocolate bar. Oh, oh, <laughs> now I got it. <laughs> Just my age. My wife says I was born 40 years too soon. <laughs> I want to ask you a couple of questions on LinkedIn. I have 12,500 contacts on LinkedIn. I use Sales Navigator. I'm in a B2B business uh, and building my brand through then. I actually got a DM today for somebody who wants to do business with me during the... I actually just sent him a text and said, I'll call you later. Um, I wanted to ask you about tagging vid videos, tagging people in videos, and also hashtagging people. What would your recommendations be? Use it in the way it's intended. So <laughs> it's funny that you asked that because four days ago I made a video about telling people that I don't want to get tagged and that went viral for me. Um, <laughs> and because people are misusing the tagging function, um, if you have a video and, and you want to, 
you have a person that you feel like actually will value that video, or you're addressing someone personally, or you say, talk about something, this person inspired me to do this, then tag them. That's obviously how it's supposed to be used. Don't spam it and just tag 50 connections that you have who have no context to the video just because you want to force them to watch the video. Same with hashtags, like use the hashtags that are relevant to it. Right now, I know, it's funny that you asked it too, the video I showed about LinkedIn where I talked with the VP of LinkedIn video, he was saying exactly that they're pushing hashtags right now massively on LinkedIn. So I think it's gonna become more, more, more and more important to figure out what the right hashtags is. Um, but personal experience, I don't think it's very important right now because people are not even aware that there's a hashtag function on LinkedIn. That means they're not looking for it. That means it's a not, not an effective tool to get more reach. Um, but it's always just about being aware how it changes. So what I'm saying to you right now might be different in two months, even more so because it's so new and so it's constantly changing and people are in the process of figuring this platform out that it might be completely different in two months. But use both functions how it's supposed to be used. Thank you. Um, over there. Uh, thanks very much for that. That was absolutely fantastic uh, information there. My name's James Perry. I'm an accountancy coach, and LinkedIn has worked fantastically for me, albeit very, very niche, in that I target accounting students globally around the world. But one thing that I would like your opinion on is, Colly alluded to, the Sales Navigator, if you've used it. You, I know you were talking about paid advertising through Instagram. There's any such functionality through LinkedIn. So your question is, should you use paid advertising on LinkedIn? Uh, no. I tried it. Um, remember the slide where I said CPM right now on Instagram is five cents? So that means I'm paying five cents, at least for some specific targeting, five cents to show 2,000 people. CPM on LinkedIn ads right now is $10. Well, so that's what, 20x, 200x. I don't think it's worth it right now. go about this. In the front. How, how much time? One more? So this is the last? Go ahead. Hi, um, Finn. Absolutely brilliant talk. So well done. Um, I, uh, I'm in LinkedIn quite frequently and one of the things that I've noticed is that there's a lot of people going on and plugging what I call pointless crap. Um, we're all time poor, so I like to consume um, like quality content and I think LinkedIn... By the way, we all do. Yeah, of course we do. I think LinkedIn is so, is so new that people aren't really understanding what the platform and why they should be going on. Um, what's your views on like the type of content that should be shared? Good content. Yes, right. So I mean, instead of the, plugging pointers It's always crap. that. That, that's exactly the opportunity right now. If you look on, Insta, uh, on, on LinkedIn right now, the types of videos, it's the, the video production is very low. So there's not like a YouTube vlog where you have drone shots and you have music in there and you have transitions and all that fancy stuff. It's just people taking out their phone and filming. And yeah, there's a lot of things that are like boring. And that's exactly why there's even more, more opportunity because if the boring content works right now, just think about what good content can do on there. So it's just, right now, to get more specific, what works really well on LinkedIn right now in terms of content, it's content anywhere between one to three minutes um, videos. Videos are very much preferred on LinkedIn right now because it's a new form of content for them. Written stuff, articles have been on LinkedIn for a while. Videos are new, so they're pushing it. So one to three minute videos, five minute max. Um, that's what I'm seeing, and it's very simple stuff. Very authentic stuff, pull out your camera, point it to your face, don't try to get fancy. I'm actually seeing right now that it's working less well. Like, if you're trying to put edits in there and music and, and all that fancy stuff, people feel like it's not authentic anymore. So make it simple. Talk about business-related stuff. Storytelling works really well. The format of telling a story that you experience as a business owner, as, a, as someone who, who, who faces these problems as an entrepreneur or whatever it is, or as someone who, who wants to push their services, and then one lesson at the end. So 
I, I just, one of my clients just like canceled or like, like did, doesn't want to work with me anymore. I'm freaking sad, but here's how I handled the situation. So people can get a takeaway and learn from it. That's in general what works really well on LinkedIn right now. And what about those people um, who just aren't comfortable in front of the camera at all, um, yet still go on? <laughs> yeah. So do you post videos or no? Do I? No, no, sorry, no. You don't? I do on Instagram stories and on Facebook Live, but not LinkedIn, because I just think people just haven't established what exactly it's to be used for. That's really why, I mean, yeah, so what? I mean, you either don't do it because you're uncomfortable or you do it even though you're uncomfortable and you get the results. That's like the simple answer, but because like that's what a lot of people are thinking on LinkedIn right now, that's also why it's working so well to be authentic. You can literally make a video about saying, this is my first LinkedIn video, I really do not want to do it because it's making me uncomfortable and I feel weird doing this, but I'm still doing it because I feel like there's opportunity here. You know how, how much that will resonate with so many people? And once someone can relate to you, that's when they're going to watch you because they feel a personal connection and they want to watch the next video because they want to see how you evolve, getting better at video and e evolving. So, I don't know, do it anyway. Okay, thank you. That's it. Thank you so much. Where do I put this? Give it to me. Okay, thank you, Finn. That was really interesting. LinkedIn's one of those ones that I still haven't got round to know. Navy, you always say that it's really good to get on to. So uh, thank you, Finn, once again.